In this episode, AZP blog writers Mallory and Ryan sub in to talk about some of their favorite mini-bosses. Hello and welcome to another Zelda podcast. I'm your host, David Geisler, and tonight um, I will not be your host, actually. Um, Ryan and Mallory Kuhn are going to be recording an episode for us tonight. I am tremendously excited about this. We're still in this kind of awkward situation of trying to figure out how to record episodes during a global pandemic, and um, Mallory and Ryan are married, and they live together, and I... I've really grown fond of both of them recently because they write blogs for our website. And back in season two, I don't know if people ever remember, but MJ Kuhn and I think like Rambo Kuhn, Kuhn we would um, read listener feedback and it was it was them. It was Mallory and Ryan back in season two. They were just listeners, but we've reached out to them. They've reached out to us. They became writers. We've become friends, though I've still never actually met them in real life. Though after the pandemic, I can't wait to drive to Detroit and meet up with them and... Uh, Uh, record some episodes. But in the meantime, I actually asked them, I said, hey, you know, it was really important to me when I was recording with Kate that we recorded in the same room, that we didn't do Skype episodes. You're literally the only two people in the AZP family, in the AZP crew right now that are in the same house, the same building. And I think both of you have wonderful personalities. Could you guys record an episode for us for AZP? I think it would be a lot of fun. And I, th- I think that both Mallory and Ryan were very excited about that. I-, I-, I think they weren't nervous. Maybe they were nervous a little bit. But I got to tell you, I've already listened to the episode, and they did wonderfully. Um, they I gave them a little bit of listener feedback, which was a lot of fun. I gave them a couple tweets. I have some listener feedback to go through here as well. But tonight, I also should tell you, if you're tuning in, if this is your first episode, this is kind of a special episode, um, Mallory and Ryan, who did appear in our previous episode together as a single team for our A Zelda Quiz episode, um, tonight, they will discuss mini-bosses. They're having a favorite mini-bosses episode. And the favorite episodes, I always really enjoyed recording those with Kate back in season one and two. Because you kind of just, it's not a top ten. You just kind of free flow. Maybe both of you have written some things down on a list. And it's very conversational. And I think that Mallory and Ryan, Mallory and Ryan have gotten used to the format enough that... Um, that they would they would perfectly fit into that into that style of conversation. And if I may, since I've already listened to it, they did. And I gotta say one more thing before I go to listener feedback. This was um, initially this was somewhat of a logistics choice in that I was thinking I'd really like for two people who are Zelda fans that are part of AZP that are in the same building. And that was Mallory and Ryan, and and I really felt that they did quite well in the quiz episode. I thought they both have wonderful personalities, but. This was the first time ever that I was able to listen to another Zelda podcast. I was able to listen to an episode and not know what was going to be said next. And that was such a treat. I have to say, I was able to be a fan of another Zelda podcast for one episode because Mallory and Ryan recorded and I had no idea what they were going to talk about. We picked the topic, but otherwise I had no idea. And I listened along and Ryan would have a suggestion and I thought, oh my gosh, I'd never think of that. And Mallory would talk about a certain mini boss and I thought, wow, I never even thought about that or that's a great point. And I'm so grateful because it gave me this really strange and beautiful experience where I was able to be a listener and a fan of the show that Kate and I created you know, two years ago. So that was really special. I I hope um, if you're a brand new listener, you're more than welcome to to back up a couple episodes. I would even recommend it. But um, for those of you who who have been sticking with us through this this uh, pandemic situation, boy, this was a special special treat. And so I hope you welcome Mallory and Ryan into our AZP family because I thought they did a wonderful wonderful job. So I am going to go to a little bit of listener feedback here. I'll I'm going to kind of crank though there are two longer ones that I really wanted to read and then I'm going to I'm going to duck out and queue up their file and I really hope you guys enjoy. So uh, let's see here. I have one we had one over on YouTube by Il Flamingo and Il Flamingo, oh yes yes yes, this is wonderful. Uh, Il Flamingo said, "Hello Dan or whoever else is reading this." This was a comment on our Season 3, Episode 1 episode, which was, um, (laughs) Season 3, Episode 1 episode, 
Uh, this was our episode where Dan and I got together to talk about some of our favorite Zelda commercials. There's actually a few that we didn't cover, so I think there might have to be a sequel or a follow-up episode sometime, maybe season four or five, about some more Zelda commercials, because we've found more since even recording this episode. But anyway, Il Flamingo says, Hello, Dan, or whoever else is reading this. I was listening to an episode and thought that there was no record of any fan art. I thought I might as well be the first. Dan is on the left, and David is on the right. In parentheses, it's the only two faces I've seen. Sorry, Kate, smiley face. It's just a caricature, caricature, but I hope you all like it. That's the link to the image. So they sent, they put a link in the image to their Google Drive, Il Flamingo. I actually uh, asked Il Flamingo's permission, saved the file, and threw, and threw it up on the Another Zelda Podcast website as well. And you can find this, uh, this uh, I think, tremendously charming computer sketch of Dan and I, uh, our first official AZP fan art over on under fun stuff on our podcast on zeldapodcast.com and I thought that was just really it, honestly it warmed my heart Il Flamingo it was great um thank you so much oh a quick one a quick iTunes review over on iTunes <laughs> I guess it's Apple Podcasts these days but you know for like the last decade it's been iTunes um uh, this is by Zelda for Life 08 and the title of the review, five star review. The title of the review is just season three, and the the uh, the review simply says, "Thank you for keeping the podcast going through this tough time." Uh, I, I guess you know, prayer hands, prayer hands, prayer hands, or grateful hands, grateful hands, grateful hands. And Zelda for Life 08. That I wanted to read this one because. It spoke to me. It's been very difficult trying to figure out how to keep a show that has a format that is so. Um, difficult to pull off when you can't be together <laughs> and it's been a journey and we've had a lot of support from our listeners and i think it's given us some extra episodes or some extra opportunities to find new ways to do episodes i loved the quiz episode i loved doing it i think we need to do more quiz episodes i think that broke open a seal that never would have happened if it wasn't for keeping the podcast going through these tough times and I think we need, when we do our live meetups, we need to start doing fan, maybe we bring fans up or people who come to the listener feedback or listen, uh, the meetups and have them be teams as a quiz. I just think, I think we've popped open a whole new thing here and I'm so grateful for that. And so Zelda for Life 08, thank you for giving us that review on iTunes. And I think I'm just going to do two, um, they're kind of longer. There's one over on Patreon and then one that was also um, over on iTunes. Actually, real quick, Andre Vinicius said over on YouTube on our Lynx Love episode, which is our third episode ever of season one, he said, hey guys, you've entirely entirely forgotten about Lana and Sia in Hyrule Warriors. And he's absolutely right. Back then, Kate and I did not talk about Lana or Sia as uh, we were doing an episode about characters who inevitably seem to have a crush on Link, even though maybe maybe that's not part of the main storyline. It does seem to be a common theme from time to time, especially in the older games. And uh, Lana and Sia are in the uh, the Hyrule Warriors spinoff game. Maybe, just maybe, Kate and I didn't talk about Lana and Sia because at the time we hadn't played Hyrule Warriors. I have now. Um, and also, it's you know it's kind of like Hyrule Warriors is in that weird Smash Brothers Mario Kart space where it's kind of in canon, but not really in canon. But, but, but I have to research them a little bit more. And I do remember both characters in Hyrule Warriors. And uh, Andre, thank you for that, for that input. Um... <laughs> this was cute. Over on our A Zelda Quiz episode, season three, episode six, Nathaniel Nobles simply said, bro, y'all should have 10, 100 million subs. That was a lot of zeros without commas. 100 million subs. Well, we're somewhere around 600 right now as of this recording, Nathaniel Nobles, but thank you so much for the uh, for the glowing critique. <laughs> Uh, I would happily invite hundreds of thousands of millions of subs because that just would mean that we get to learn more from our fans and we get to continue the conversation, and that would truly be a treat. Okay, so actually, I want to go over to Patreon real quick. Ethan Lindgren over there uh, joined us recently, and Ethan Lindgren said, Hey, David, really excited to finally be able to support you and Kate. Can't wait until you do some meetups in Chicago. Um, oh, man, Ethan, if you live in Chicago, I think it's inevitable that we're going to be meeting in real life. Um, my wife and I live in Michigan, there we go, and get to Chicago by train in just a few hours. You know, Michigan, um, Mallory and Ryan, who are doing this episode tonight, they live in Michigan as well. I wonder if there's a connect, maybe maybe there's some uh, some close geographical situations there, Ethan. Anyway, 
Um, my wife and I live in Michigan and get to Chicago by train in just a few hours. We're hoping to hear more about it soon so we can plan a trip out there. Wow, you are most welcome in Chicago, Ethan. Just to give you a heads up, Season 2, Episode 1, Open Areas has some kind of error. Oh my goodness. Where I couldn't play it all until I became a patron. Oh my gosh, I'll have to look. This is, I'm reading this for the first time here, this part. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly look into that. Maybe we've got a funky file on the feed. Season 2, Episode 1. Thank you so much, Ethan. And then he said, by the way, I threw a review on podcasts. My name there is Lingrin5K. I know they're tough to read, so the phonetic pronunciation should be Lingrin, Lingriner5K. Thanks for everything you do. The two of you do. Wish you both the best, Ethan. Ethan, I am most grateful for your patronage and um, your kind words and also your help. Uh, if we have a broken file, I got to check it out. But I did go over to podcasts and I actually found Ethan's review and I wanted to read it very, very quickly. Over there on June 4th, um, Ethan, uh, which is Ling- Lindgren, Lindgringer, five. now I'm getting tongue-tied, 5K, even though he helped me say it phonetically. Uh, the review is... 10 out of 10 would recommend. And he says, AZB team, just wanted to say thank you for helping me fill the need for more Zelda in my life. I've been a super fan since I started playing Ocarina of Time before I could even read. What? My mother and I bonded over the game as she read for me and helped me through it. Oh, that's amazing. That is phenomenal, Ethan. I don't have any friends or family that love the series like I do. So when I listen to your show... To and from work every day, it's like having a discussion with you about Legend of Zelda that I couldn't have with others. We get that a lot. We hear that a lot. Um, I know I should expect it by now, but I still find myself yelling, Term- Termina, when Dave calls Clock Town Termania. Oh, boy, Ethan. Yes, I've, I've learned my lesson. About a year ago, there was a solid season where I called Termina Termania just, just off the cuff. I was so convinced. But Termina is indeed the the name of uh, the land that Clocktown is in, technically. Love the direction you've gone with Season 3. Oh, thank you. By bringing all those guests in, Kate's absence. Uh, Big shout out to Dan for having the courage to join the show as a new fan and being a great guest. He's hilarious. I concur. I think Dan is a very interesting addition to our AZP family because he's only played a few Zelda games. He's becoming such a big fan. And I think there's people that... You know, the people who listen to this show uh, bridge uh, bridge that entire spectrum. People who have just played Breath of the Wild or maybe just a couple games. Uh, people who have played every single game. I myself was a kid when The Legend of Zelda, the original Nintendo game, came out. I remember renting it. I remember it being a new thing. I was just, just young enough that that was a special thing for me. And so uh, I really appreciate Dan being part of the show. And Ethan, I'm glad you like him as well. He continues... I think you guys should check out The Legend of Zelda, A Complete Development History. It's a free ebook that was just published. I think Dave especially would like it. Oh, I'm definitely Googling this. Can't wait for your Majora's Mask review. It's my favorite game, and I've been anxiously awaiting for you to play it. Thank you again, and sorry for the long post. Also, Dave, happy to hear you finally got a Switch. Yes, indeed. Um, My girlfriend got me a Switch for my birthday. I am eternally grateful. And The Majora's Mask review. Ethan, I gotta say, I have thoughts. I'm, I'm genuinely hoping that, that Kate is in a position that she's able to join us to some degree in season four, and I just desperately want to do that review with her. I really do. Because we did our Ocarina, ep- our Ocarina review, she's had such an interesting relationship with Majora's Mask, learning about it through season one and two, that instead of pushing forward with a Majora's Mask here in season three, Majora's Mask review episode, I seriously think I might offload that to season four, and I think it'll be worth it. But Ethan, again, thank you so much. Okay. Um, one final, um, uh, one final Patreon review here. Patreon's been <laughs> kind of exploding lately. I'm really, really touched by this, especially in a time where it's it's so difficult for us to get content out. Uh, Kayla Sanderson said, "Hi, David and Kate. I just wanted to send you a quick note to let you know how much I've been enjoying the podcast. Zelda holds lots of special mo- moments and memories for me. So listening to y'all have so much fun diving into the games has been great. Also, I wanted to share a quick story that I think you'll enjoy." When the NES came out, my older brothers were so excited to have one, but my mother, in an effort to delay the inevitable as long as possible, told them that they would have to pay for it themselves. They pooled their money with all the other kids from the neighborhood with promises of shared playing time, this is amazing, and had the money in about a week. 
My mom relented and said that she would buy their first game, but that she would not let them buy another until they had beat the first one. Oh my gosh, I think I have a feeling where this is going. Seemed fair, except that they decided on The Legend of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. Well, we all know what that means. It took time. It took them a few weeks to find the candle, and I don't think they would have realized they could crouch if my dad hadn't offered to play and started pushing random buttons. But they preserved. But they persevered. Pardon me. And after about four or five months, they beat it and were finally allowed to buy another game. And Zelda has been one of my favorite franchises since. I haven't played quite as many as they have, but I'm enjoying Breath of the Wild quite a bit. Ready for the sequel. Hoping you are well, and thanks for the excellent fun. Okay, bye! In all caps with a smiley face. Kayla, that was a tremendous story. That was wonderful. I loved it so much. Thank you for your support on Patreon. You can Everybody, you can find Patreon by going to our website. We have a little Patreon link, or you can just go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. But more importantly, I'm so touched by hearing about this episode, This not this episode, this story of um, the community kind of pulling together to get a NES, and then they pick one of the hardest Zelda games ever to be created, and they have to beat it before they can get another game. And it looks like your mom stuck to her word, and so did they. And, and months and months later, a second game was able to be purchased. So cool. All right, everybody. I can't wait. Um, I, 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 I'm now uh, kind of passively introducing you to Mallory and Ryan, even though you've kind of heard them as a team, a team together in our previous episode. I am going to hand off the episode to Mallory and Ryan, and here we go. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you, everyone. Hello, and welcome to another Zelda podcast. My name is David Geisler. No, I'm not David Geisler. I am actually Ryan Kuhn, and this is my wife, Mallory. Hello. <laughs> A Navi impersonator here. <laughs> um, so we are doing this episode for David. Um, he asked us to do a quick little episode to fill in uh, with everything going on. So we're going to dive in for the most part and just go. Um, so... Yeah, so with everything going on with the pandemic, um, David wanted to keep the format of the show still just like two people chilling in a room talking about Zelda, Mm -hmm. which is kind of hard to do when everyone is self-quarantining. But Ryan and I have a distinct advantage there in that uh, we live together. (laughs) So we have been self-quarantining together this entire time. Um, So David did ask if we would be willing to um, to do an episode, just the two of us, and we were like, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so that is why we are here, guest hosting for you this week. Yeah, we'll try. We got huge shoes to fill, but yes. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna try our darndest. Do our best. <laughs> So before we start everything, David did send me a couple of listener feedbacks to go over. Um, so a few Twitter posts that he sent me. So I'm going to go through these real quick. Um, first one is from Preston Lambert. Um, he tweeted back to us um, saying, At our Lizell pod, hey, hey, easy way to remember Talon and Malin at Lone Lone Ranch. Their names are Talon and Malin. Love the podcast. You guys are great. That actually huh. makes a lot of sense. That's super genius. Yeah, I never I thought never of that. I never even considered that before. No, not Is at that all. legit? Probably where Lon Lon Ranch gets its name. I mean, from. keep it simple for all of us out is. there. It probably is. It just, yeah. For me this whole time. Um, next one, I believe it's from Bex. Let me open this up here real quick. Um, so it's from Bex dot 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 neat. Um, so she said, Going back and listening to some past episodes of Another Zelda Pod, and every time there's listen to feedback, I'm like, hey, I know them. On top of being my fave podcast about the best game series, this podcast has allowed me to meet some so many awesome people. Heart emoji. I mean, we were one of those people. We, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember, we were actually one of the main commenters for a long time because we sent in so many different things to say, hey, this and hey this to the point probably david got annoyed with us <laughs> no but, <laughs> we did comment a lot though <laughs> yes we did so i think it was i think it's really cool that now we're a part of this show and everything and, and yeah. now doing listening to feedback for everyone else so i know what well, it's such a fun community you're so right like pretty much every not pretty much literally every person that i've met through commenting on and now kind of being a part of the team on this podcast has been super super cool so 
Um, next one is from Brady. Um, I'm trying to load up his tweet right now. Uh, microphone would work <coughs> properly. Um, but he said, at the Trevor, I don't know who that is, but and at another Zelda pod, I've always wanted to play Wind Waker. I really wish they would remaster for the Switch. Yes, to both. Yes. You should play Wind Waker because it's awesome. <laughs> but also, I so want it for the Switch because I want to just be able to play it handheld if I want to. Yeah, the only issue, um, though, is they just remade it for the Wii U, and I know a lot of people don't want the Wii U for whatever reason. No, but we, that's... We don't have a Wii U. Like no. we skipped that system yeah, altogether did. because they didn't make a specific Zelda game for it. Yeah. Um but yeah, I would love to play the remastered Wind Waker where you don't have to do the Triforce shard map with extortion tingle. Yes. That, that is the easy. <laughs> I would part love of that. to play that on Switch. Um so yeah, I'm with you. I hope that they And that do was that. so I know the name. That's from Brady in Ho. So, um, the next one we have you, Brady. is Blackbeard Matt. I love the name. <laughs> um, he says, I've really enjoyed listening to Add Another Zell Pod in my free time, very slowly, he puts down. Uh, learned so many random things about Legend of Zelda that I had no idea about. Lots of fun. Hashtag Nintendo, hashtag podcast. Yeah, we learned a lot, honestly, from this show as well. So true. Um, yeah. I know David always says we're not experts, but like we we know some things and someone else is going to say something else. And we all learn from this. So it's a great thing to really put that in there and everything else. We just learned the secret of Lon Lon Ranch. <laughs> exactly. So you I mean, <laughs> literally we five minutes day. ago. <laughs> um, I think that's that's it. That's all David sent me. So we got the four. Nice. Um, so. Let's hop in um, to do our podcast here of mini bosses. Yes. So first things first, let's debate or let's set the the groundwork of what a mini boss is. A mini boss is a special enemy that is neither a regular enemy at the time. Yeah. um, Or not a boss either. Um, And most of them are found inside a, a dungeon, but sometimes they're outside the dungeon. So... Let's start off. Mallory, you want to go first? Sure. I'll kick us off here. Um, so I have my like notes here in just um, release order <laughs> of the games um, that I've played, which, again, I haven't played all of them. Um, just so to give um, all of you guys some information about what games I have played. Um, consoles only. I haven't played any of the handhelds, unfortunately. Uh, sorry, our cat is <laughs> very interested in what we're doing right now. So if the magical sword folks see us swatting off screen, we're keeping him at bay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I also have not played any of the like first release order game that I've played is um, Ocarina. So just so you know, so starting release order for me with the first one I've played, um, Ocarina of Time, the... Mini boss that I'm going to talk about first is Dead Hand. Okay. okay. Yeah. What you got? Um, okay, so it's found first in the bottom of the well, um, and then next you also encounter one in the Shadow Temple. Um, it's creepy. It's super creepy. So if you don't remember, oh, that's the thing with the hands coming out of the ground, right? Yes. Yes. It is like um, basically like a bunch of zombies like stitched together. It's so creepy. It's like a big blob, and it's bites you and it shoots hands up and grabs you out of the ground yeah. um yeah i wrote it's basically a horrific zombie creation that looks like you've <laughs> melted a bunch of people together um yeah so it's really creepy super creepy which is usually not my aesthetic for video games at all i tend to like the but it's perfect for that temple though. yes no it's so perfect for that temple um and then i picked it so the way that you beat it and I guess I was looking it up online because I've only ever beaten it one way. Um, and I guess you can beat it without having it catch you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I have never let it do that. I just always let it snag me and then I wriggle free and then I just smack the crap Sna- out of it with the sword. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why <laughs> that's another reason why I picked it because you can defeat it through straight up hack and slash. Um which is very much my gaming strategy <laughs> for any game where you wield a sword. Uh, <laughs> I tend to, like, when we play the Wii-based games, I'm just smacking the sword around. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that is why I picked 
Dead Hand from Ocarina of Time. That's a good choice. I, I did not. Th- I I remember him. Um, and I, I mean, creepy as always. So but, creepy. Um, well, the whole bottom of the well. The Shadow Temple in general. Shadow Temple is creepy. I think the bottom of the well is creepier than the Shadow Temple, though, personally. I mean, it's just ominous. Mm-hmm. So um, the, the temple itself is just more like shadowy. When you have the lens of truth by the yep. time you get there, because mm-hmm. that's what you get at the bottom of the well. So the whole bottom of the well has like... Parts of the floor that fall out from under you and, like, mm-hmm. walls that you can walk through, but you can't see any of that stuff for at least part of True. Yeah. while you're there, which yeah. is very stressful. You got uh, the floor masters you can't actually see because oh, you God. need the, the, the lens of truth. To see them. Yeah. yeah. Creepy part of the game. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'm next. Um, I got one that I don't think you're going to like as well. It's from Twilight <laughs> oh. Princess. Okay. Um. And it's one of those odd ones that's not in a dungeon either. Okay. Skull Kid. Skull Kid from... Oh! When you're in the Lost Woods Oh my gosh, I forgot about that. No, I hate that because those (laughs) creepy scarecrow things that... Yep, the puppets. Come after yep. you. Ugh. I will say first and foremost, like I know it's 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 creepy and annoying, but like that version of Saria's song is like my favorite on the piano. It still has that feel of like kind of happy, but really it's just like it's very like and ethereal yeah. sounding. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good mm-hmm. one. Um, so, and I do actually have a question for this one that I did see, and I was wondering this. I wanted your opinion. Okay. Um, so going with the timeline, I saw this when I was doing my research. How did this one Skull Kid survive? Because we know Skull Kid from being in Ocarina and also obviously Majora's Mask. Yeah. Um, but this is this one lone Skull Kid in Lost Woods that seems to be protecting the Temple of Time there. So just I just want to see if you had any theories. Maybe he was just a random survivor of the K- Kokori, because if I remember correctly, the Kokori, Kokiri. who get Kokiri, sorry, I, I'm just spelling <laughs> David. Um, Shots the, fired. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, but they, when they get lost in the woods, they become Skull Kids. I thought they became stall children. No, I think those are adults that get lost. They would there. become stall, whatever. Yeah. I can't remember. I think children become stall children that... Checks out. I don't know for sure. Well, how do we know this is the only Skull Kid there? That's true. They're pretty, like, wily. Yeah, that's true. That's there could true. be, like, a whole, like, Children of the Corn vibe going on. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. <laughs> there could. There could yeah. be dozens of Skull Children around, and this is just the one, like, that drew the short straw and was like, go fight the green hat guy that just came in. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> so, that's, I mean, that's, he's, he's creepy. He's pretty easy to beat for the most part. I mean, those because you got to pop him with things. the bow and arrow. Well, you face him twice because you face him in wolf form and then you face him in adult form. And wolf form, especially when you have that little like attack thing when with Midna and you just yeah. attack all of them. You can, it's it's pretty easy to attack. Oh all yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember yeah. that. And then, like you said, you kind of use the bow and arrow to kind of get him as an adult. Mm-hmm. So. I don't remember. I remember attacking the scarecrows as a wolf. I don't mm-hmm. remember defeating. You had to. Skull Kid. First time, you had as to, a wolf. You had to get the sword to become like human again. We got to play Twilight Princess again. Yeah, it's, it's been a minute for us. <laughs> it's been too long. So, yeah, that's one of my favorites. Skull Kid, Twilight Princess. Super but, valid. Yeah, I mean, again, I hate that one because those scarecrows, scarecrows come in like this. I have nightmares <laughs> about those. If I played that game as mm-hmm. a child instead of as an adult <laughs> first time, I think I would have had legitimate nightmares. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yep. All right. What's your next one? All right. So moving on, I didn't have any others from Ocarina that I picked because okay. I, well, I mean, quite frankly, I just figured you would pick a slew from Ocarina because you love I that game so much. Ocarina still, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to move on to Majora's Mask. Okay. Um, the one that I picked from Majora's Mask was the Garrow Master. Remind. I I remember his name. Yeah. So it's um. So the Stone Tower Temple. Okay. And. Uh, I picked him just because he looks awesome. He's like masked and he's cloaked and he wields two flaming swords. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I do remember and that. you're like yeah. in that building and he like drops in from the ceiling ish mm-hmm. area almost. Um, so, and he's kind of wizroby in the fact that you lose sight of him and then he just pops up out of mm-hmm. nowhere. Um, so, and then you beat him. 
you can stun him with a hook shot, or according to the internet, you can stun him with a Deku nut, which I never tried. I've, I've actually uh, had one, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I pretty much underutilized Deku nuts. As soon as I have any <laughs> other sort of ranged anything, yeah. I'm like, nope. <laughs> No more of the of those. Um, but yeah, so you can stun him with that, and then you just run, hit him with your sword. Um, so yeah, I picked him mostly because of the aesthetic. I think he looks super cool mm-hmm. with the flaming swords. Um, and then also just that whole area of Majora's where like the Stone Tower Temple is, um, is one of my favorite areas of Majora's because it's just... I don't know. It's interesting, and I, I liked it. <laughs> well, Stone Tower in general is a, is a really interesting tunnel using, um, that, uh, I forget the name of the song, but the song you have to play in order to make a a like doll version of you so you can set mm-hmm. down a, a switch pretty much, and then you can do yeah, all the versions You can versions do it in each well. mask, yep. yeah. Yeah, what song is that? I forgot what song it is. Someone will tell us. Yeah. I mean, you Commenters, guys. help yes. us. It's probably been five plus years since I played through Majora's. I got the 3DS yeah. version. For Christmas, and I know it's now July. I still haven't played it. <laughs> you started it. I did start it, but it's just so hard to play on the handheld because I feel like Majora's in particular is a game that like I want to sit down and like play in a chunk. Yeah. For like an hour out at least. Mm-hmm. And it's well, I had the same issue with the so 3DS hard. when I did Ocarina 3D as well, and I did the Master Quest. That little joystick on there is just difficult <laughs> yeah. sometimes. I remember you swearing at it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up. All right, I'm going to actually, this is one of those rare situations where you actually have too many bosses in one dungeon. So my, I'm going to stick with that same dungeon, same game. Okay. And go Gomes. So Gomes oh, is, um, reminds he is. me. Okay. And this is Twilight Princess? Oh, no, this, Majora's Mask. This is Majora's oh, Mask. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I couldn't. So yeah. he is kind of Poe-like, like he's he's flying around, kind of ghost, and he has a giant sigh. And he has a bunch of keys that follow him around, and you oh, gotta use oh. a light arrow or or even the kunuts at that point yeah, yeah, to yeah. make he the keys like get away. He looks like a phantom almost. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember him. So I picked him also for aesthetic. I think he looks really, really cool. Super I do remember cool. him from the game. I forgot about him. Yeah, we each picked the, the opposite ones for that. Yeah, from for that stone, too. Stone tower <laughs> there. So um, I will doing a little research. I did find out that his name translate French. To Reaper, which makes sense because Ooh, he has that side. Yeah, with the side, yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I said earlier, he's very similar to the nature of a Poe where like he has, in Twilight Princess especially, where they had that little orb that mm-hmm. they keep track of. And that's yeah. where you're trying to attack to defeat him. And in order, this is how you then get the boss key for the Stone Tower. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, he's very cool looking. I When I was doing my research for this, I mean, he just looks really cool. Yeah. So, I'm yeah, excited. I do I'm remember him, to see him now. In the, re- in the more remastered version for the 3DS to see what he looks like because it may- they make him look better. I need to keep look. Oh, look, the 3DS is like literally yeah, right, right, right here next Charged to me. To I know, and I just I need to play it. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right. So your next one. All right, I'm up. Okay, so now we're moving on to one of my favorite games in my order. <laughs> The Wind Waker. Uh, you do love Wind Waker. Shocker. I know I love Wind Waker so much. So for anyone who's listened to any other thing that we've ever said on this show knows that it's the first Zelda game I ever played. Um, so I have super nostalgia for Wind Waker. I understand that it has flaws. Don't don't think I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about, because I have a few from Wind Waker. Okay. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about is Phantom Ganon. And there's our first one that we both have. Is that yep. on your list, too? I thought it might be. Um, so for anyone that doesn't remember, it's at the Forsaken Fortress, but the second time you go there. So not when you go with no sword and it's like a stressful anxiety fest of sneaking around. It's like the second time when you come back and you have your sword and you're like, yeah, I'm going to own this place. Um so he's like right at the beginning. Like basically you get off the boat, you pop up onto that like mm-hmm. first platform area where there's all the spotlights going around and he just like, boom, hey. Um, so he looks like Ganon. <laughs> I mean, he has to. <laughs> but like shadowy, obviously, because he's a phantom. Um, and like he's made of smoke almost mm-hmm. in the tune style, though, obviously. Um, and then you beat him with the tennis thing. Yes. So he shoots the energy balls at you. You reflect them back at him. Um, so and you have to time it right until one of you screws up and it hits them. And spoiler alert, if you are me playing this game nine times out of ten, I am getting my butt kicked by the energy ball because I am very, very bad at Ganon tennis. I'm very bad at it. 
uh, every single game that it's in. I know it's not that hard. Like, I totally understand <laughs> that the mechanic is not that difficult. It's just like timing and pressing a button or swinging your Wiimote yeah. at the right time. I just am so bad at it. Um, but it's still pretty fun. And then you just run up and you attack him with your sword um, yeah. once he's stunned. I do believe you face him twice. I, I wrote that in my notes for him. Do you? I think so. Because this, I just, I didn't even research this. I probably should, but I'm halfway, <laughs> I'm halfway through replaying Wind Waker right now, and I like just well, not okay. just, but like recently, I just oh. did Phantom Ganon in mm-hmm. that. But th- when does he show back up? Is it at the very I end? I don't. I did not put that in my notes. I said oh. I, I just wrote down that he, you fought, you uh, fought twice in the game. That's okay, all, that's all. That's all. It's I probably so. at the end. Yeah. People remind us of when you find Phantom Cannon again. Yes. Um, and the other thing too, like a uh, fun note that this was is also if you go to Ocarina, he is a main boss actually in the Forest Temple, mm-hmm. Forest yep. Ganon, or a Phantom Cannon in there. So he comes out of the pictures. He's right on his yeah. horse until you then get to the second part, which is then playing tennis with them, as you say. <laughs> um, and then. Uh, one other fun note I was going to ask, like I'm want, wondering if this is the same Phantom Ganon, because the timeline works perfectly from with that. Ocarina to Wind Waker. Yes. So he in Ocarina he was after you beat him he's forced into the the realm between what realms. Right. And I mean Ganondorf can easily with his power go back and get him, but I mean they look totally different. Well, I was going to say I guess that. that's the question. This is like a, a very like philosophical question of Zelda lore, because if we think about it, so like if we're thinking of the lore of Zelda talking about Ganon, it's like, OK, so like with the three people, Zelda, Link, Ganon, they're all like reincarnated basically and popping up in every cycle. Ganondorf is reincarnated, the like human body form. But is Ganon legit the same spirit the whole time? Because if so, then Phantom Ganon, if it's just like the disembodied spirit, Mm -hmm. could theoretically be the same Ganon in every single game, right? Yeah, could be. If it's the same spirit that just keeps getting spit back out into different bodies, like the spirit of Demise. Yeah, I think it is. I think I was actually about to say it's definitely Demise Maybe. that then loads into each time. Or is someone Phantom is Ganon just like a spell that Ganondorf I, puts Maybe. out to fight Link? Like that's, that's I, think it, I think, the question. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, what do us, you guys yeah, think? Or does us, anyone know? Let us know if, if you there's know. a definitive answer. Mm-hmm. But that's interesting because I always just kind of assumed it was like Ganondorf is like sitting up in his tower in the Forsaken Fortress and was like, I don't feel like getting up right now. Yeah. Well, it is. Go, an my time. shadow creation. It is an awkward time. He's <laughs> like, because after you defeat him, he's like, oh, what a worthless creature. I, do, I banish you to the realms of two realms. So, like, he, Ganondorf made that once yeah. he had the Triforce. So, no, I don't think it's the same one. I think that it's just a. Another, like a re- another creation puppet creation not mm-hmm. a puppet but like a shadowy creation yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like okay. a like an apparition mm-hmm. summoned by the ganondorf that mm-hmm. is incarnated in the world all right anyways so my next one is and probably do maybe a couple more and then we'll take a quick little break here yeah um so my next one is from ocarina of time we're going back i snuck a peek at your note right now <laughs> don't be sneaking over here <laughs> Um, is the Iron Knuckle and specifically Nabaru that you fight again because you do fight two different things there in the Spirit Temple. So in the Spirit Temple, you go, there's a, a splits in the rooms and you go one way, you just fight a regular Iron Knuckle. And then when you come back through and go the other way, you face another Iron Knuckle with the witches there, um, Kyome and Katake. And you they bring up this Iron Knuckle who doesn't have an axe until snaps finger and then appears and then attacks you and once you defeat it you realize it's Nabaru the whole time inside the armor oh oh yes. oh my gosh yes I forgot about that yes. I was like sitting here like I vaguely remember what you're talking about <laughs> so for going to the iron knuckles they're and specifically in this game like they're big bulky things and yeah. they have the giant axe if they hit you with it you're done you're done so um, yeah I actually remember doing the three heart challenge with Ocarina <laughs> and it's like think 
thank the gods <laughs> that I did not get hit by it because I only had three hearts and like I always carried fairies. I was with gonna me, say, but, I hope you got some fairies. But I, it's it's fun to, to to jump out of the way and time it right. Like once you get the, especially once you get the rhythm going with it, it's so easy to defeat them. But it's still like uh, like living on the edge with it because you just like you might you might just mistime it, and especially with the 3ds. Like that that stick again may not be. Pulling it back just right to the jump. Poor workman who blames his tools. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I have many people that actually agree with me. But um, yeah, it's very, very fun to do. And of course, they're very similar to Dark Nuts that you see in other games as well. So, um, but yeah, I, I, and then once you defeat the second one and you see Nabaru fall out, you see her and she's confused on what's going on. And then the witches get her again and you, she just disappears. And you literally, I think you go and fight the witches right yeah, after that. You I go think. to Twin Rover right after that, mm-hmm. which also, like, one of my favorite bosses. Yeah, well. I know you love Twin Rover. I am in the minority. I do not like fighting <laughs> Twin Rover. Um, but yeah, no, it's a fun one, and facing them, and then uh, after that, you face them throughout the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, pretty much you're at the end of the game at that point, but going through the tower to get to Ganondorf, you fight them multiple times there at that point. So yeah. they're fun. I, I I think it's living on the edge type thing, living on the edge of your seats, trying to like time the jump. You daredevil. And then you. you just do the jump slash at them yeah. right afterwards. And of course, once you, you do get through the second part, they drop armor and they get a little faster. They kind of jog at you a little bit, but it's they're still very slow and very easy to beat. So yeah. again, just... Living on edge of your seat. <laughs> so, um, let's see how, how we're doing on time here. Let's do... I think I can sneak I one can in. do one more. Yeah, do one more. Because mine is... The one that I have next is very similar to the one you just said, because I'm sticking with Wind Waker. Okay. And... It's Dark Nut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is basically the knuckle of Wind Waker. Not basically, it is the knuckle of Wind Waker. Um, so just like in Ocarina of Time, after you face it as a mini boss, they're everywhere. Like I'm thinking mm-hmm. specifically the part like when you go beneath the ocean to get the Master Swords, there's like oh, yeah, 15 that whole of them in yes. that room. Um, but the first time you face them is in the Tower of the Gods, um, which it looks like a big armored... Anubis. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, Giant right? Because yeah. it's got the dog head, mm-hmm. um, which you don't see that because it has a helmet with like horns and stuff on it yeah. initially. Um, but so I picked Dark Nut <laughs> because and I think I've mentioned this on some stuff for EZP before, um, but definitely in conversation with anyone who's talked to me about Zelda. So the first time I played Wind Waker, I was, I don't know, middle school or however old I was when it came out. And I got stuck in the Tower of the Gods <laughs> for like years. And I got stuck at multiple different parts. So like some of the puzzle parts tripped me up for a while. But another part I got stuck at <laughs> was the Dark Nut mini boss. <laughs> <laughs> I could not defeat it, which is I love it now because it's so it's so easy. It's <laughs> once you realize it's, it's so easy. Yeah. Once you realize you just need to like target and then wait for the A button to do the little flashy <laughs> yes. thing. And you push A. And then you just, you know. So you you defeat it like that. So you defeat them by cutting off all the armor mm-hmm. with those timed jumps. Because um, there's like these um, stitches or... Ribbon. Yeah, ribbons. Yeah. Uh, that's ties. Rope, yeah. Yeah, Tied whatever. Up. On the back of the armor that you can cut and slice through. And then the, the chest plate falls off. You can knock the helmet off and stuff. Um, and then, like you said, with the ones in Ocarina of Time that get a little faster, these ones get really fast when you cut their armor off. Yeah. They're like... And all they of a jump sudden, kick like, you too, actually. Yeah, they'll, they'll <laughs> jump kick you and send you flying. Um, but once they have all their armor off, again, hack slash, my fave. You just kind of <laughs> like go up and go bananas. Mm-hmm. Um and, and and kick their butts. Yeah, you got you got to treat them slightly different than the um the ones from Ocarina of Time, just because you get the button, which is similar, but yes. like you can't just like randomly get try and get behind it and, and hack and slash it. You, you can could do. You can in Wind Waker. Oh, you can. Okay. Mm, if you sneak up behind them and then you can slash okay. the armor before they even target you. Um, I do that a lot in the Tower of the Gods, or okay. not the Tower of the Gods part, but the part. When you get the master sword, oh yeah, and you because again, there's like 15 face, of them, yeah. and then everything else too. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, so it gives me great satisfaction since I died so many times. The first time when I defeat, like I just played that part of Wind Waker, like I don't know a week ago now, and I beat that Dark Nut in 
<laughs> Thirty no, seconds. Not, I mean, I had I had a similar it's, thing. It's not difficult. Not to, to go on a slight tangent, but like similar thing where I was stuck on something for the longest time. Um, mine was linked to the past. Yeah, I remember and that. It was the final boss, wasn't it? No, it was. Well, it was a final boss for one of the dungeons. For one so of the dungeons. When okay. I first got into the dark world, and the first temple you go into, um, you. The boss in there is that worm thing that kind of like goes around and you have to hit its tail multiple times, but it gets quicker and quicker every time. From age 12 to probably age 25, like could not beat it. I had it on the, the Super NES. I couldn't do it there. I had an emulator, couldn't do it there. And then I finally bought um, onto the Wii before they took away the Wii store and I played it. I got to it again. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and do this. And had no issues yeah whatsoever right and then and then honestly like even from then on out like i didn't have another issue with the game that's like yeah. rolled through the, the whole you game you were just stuck at so, that one part yeah. forever yeah so yep i get those when you when you feel like you're stuck in something for the longest time and then you take a break and you come back to it after playing it and it's just like how did i struggle with this yep <laughs> yep that so, is how I feel every single time. Yeah. But yeah, I think in every game, to get back to the Dark Nuts a little bit, I think in every game, the Knuckles or the Dark Nuts are pretty fun enemies because they always drop really good spoils. Like in Wind Waker, they drop those orbs that you break and you get the Knight's Crest and rupees and hearts and like all kinds of stuff. But like I'm thinking in like even Twilight Princess, when you don't face them often, I don't know if there's anywhere else you face them besides the Monster Gauntlet. But, like, remember, like, the last level of the Monster Gauntlet is, like, three of them at the same time. Well, I'm going to hold you there. Oh. That might okay. come up a little bit. I'm going <laughs> to. We just won't. Mm? Yep. We're going we're gonna to do it. We, we did not one. trade yep. notes before beginning this <laughs> yep. episode. So, so. <laughs> we'll, we, we wanted to see how much we yeah. had to say. So. Yeah. So. Um, but, yeah. So, Dark Nut from Wind Waker is. That is a fun one. Yeah, and fun. just all of them are really cool because they're they're all very different. So I'm, we'll discuss possibly maybe the next one. <laughs> maybe we'll discuss more <gasps> after the break. After the break. Yes. So I think it's a great what time a to great stop. great segue. So, yes. <laughs> Keep you guys interested to stay for the toes. commercial. <laughs> so we're going to take a quick little break um, and probably hear something for Top Hat or um, Studio Demands It. Um, right. Those so, other super cool 6-5 shows. Yeah. Yeah. Studio Demands It. Love it. I mean, they do some great stuff in there if you're, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, but quick little break and we'll come back and continue this list. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hey, I'm Max Olmsted. And I'm Jordan Johnson. And we're here to talk about the Top Hat Balloon Show. Yeah, it's a sketch comedy series. Uh, each episode is a wacky new thing that uh, will just fill your heart with joy. Comes out every week. Listen to it's it. weekly. Yeah. Go watch. Go watch a thing. You can subscribe to the Top Hat Balloon Show on iTunes or YouTube, or visit its website at tophatballoonshow.com. Welcome back. Um, let's pick up where our discussion. I think it's my turn. And yep. I think we kind of talked about the next one. I think we're just going to go in there. Um, someone has to try and call me around and try to do my notes here. <laughs> this is why I printed mine out. <laughs> so I am going to go Dark Knight, Twilight Princess. Okay. So to me... The coolest version of this box, yes, of this of this uh, character, agree. whether the, the the knuckle or not, and the most you difficult want to, to beat. I think. Yes, yeah. So similar to the other ones, you have kind of two levels. 
thick, heavy armor with a big old sword, and then you he drops on the armor and then picks up a quicker. It's like sword. a slender sword, right? When yeah, you, not you quite know. a not quite a, a rapier or something like that, but like um, more like a. I think it just called it more. I think when I did my research, I even called it just a broadsword, but it was still smaller than the, the giant big, sword giant, or axe yeah. or mace or whatever, whatever he was he's carrying. carrying yeah. So, um, so to me, you face him. Let's see where where is he at? He's yeah. in because he's in the he's monster. In the sky. Gauntlet. He's in the sky. Oh, he's in the sky. Yeah, he's the mini boss because you get the um, you get the second claw shot mm-mm. in the sky, don't you? Maybe it was in the sky. I should have done better research think, for this. <laughs> I think you um, get the second claw shot in the sky, right? You no, know, you you re-energize the uh, the wand when you face this this iron knuckle though, Mm-mm-mm. or this iron this dark nut, I should say, right? Yeah, right the thing here. that wakes up the statues. Yeah, you get yeah, the first time yeah. you get the thing to wake up a statue. So I for, I think you go back in time for this one. It's typical time, I think, and for okay. Twilight Princess. So he's the mini boss there, and you get this the the reanimation wand where you bring the the statues with you and everything else after mm-hmm. that. Um, so, like I said, you attack him first, giant armor. He's pretty slow. And then he, he breaks all the armor off. He throws his, like, mace or whatever no, he has No, he throws you, it at you, yeah. And you have to dodge it. Uh-huh. And then he pulls out this broadsword, and he's a lot quicker. He can parry you. Super fast, um, yeah. Very, very difficult to, to beat in this one. So um, Yeah, because I remember when we did, the last time we did the... Um, Monster Gauntlet in that game, which if you haven't played the Monster Gauntlet in Twilight Princess, it is hiding underneath the desert. There's like up at the, mm-hmm. um, what is it called? The something plateau. The Garuda Plateau. Mm, I forget. But there's like a rock that I think you blow up and then underneath it, it's like you drop levels, 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 like a lot of Monster th- Gauntlets are. I think you have been to throw it or to get rid of it. And it goes back to like a bridge or something that was destroyed. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, so then it's, it's I think the very last thing is three and they're like different colors. There's like red ones and mm-hmm. black ones and gold ones. And they're like different difficulties and I forget yeah. which ones. But like when we to beat that, remember we went and we bought the um, rupee armor. Oh yeah, the Iron from, Man armor. From Little Mallow. And it's uh, super cool armor. Uh but it costs rupees to like wear it. Like, well, you like you bleed in, in, rupees every time, like every thirty seconds or something. Yeah, it you're keeps in you it. from really taking damage. Is what yeah. it is. So, but it, but by the end of the game, rupees. when you just have like stupid amount of rupees yes. and like nothing to spend them on anymore, mm-hmm. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I call it the Iron Man armor because it's like red and, and that bronze nest. So, yeah. it's really cool. It's pretty cool. Anyways, yep. sorry. No. So I think you're next. Sure. With your next one. And I think you have more on your I, list, I do you have said. a few more, yes. So maybe you do two, and then I'll jump back in. Well, I have one, two, three, four. I have five more. I only have three more. Um, well, I think that... Well, okay, whatever. I'll just come in with, with one then. Okay. Um, so the next one I'm going to talk about is also from Twilight Princess. Okay. And it is one that actually, like, I genuinely, in the game... I hate. <laughs> I, okay. I, I I hate this mini boss, and he doesn't just show up once. He shows up like four different times, um, and that mini boss is King Bulbin. I almost added him to my uh-huh. list. I was really close. So if you don't remember who King Bulbin is, or you don't know him by name, because I didn't, and I had to look it up. Um, he is like the big moblin thing with the horns. General moblin, yeah. Yeah, and he rides the boar. He's the one that, like, knocks you over in the beginning. He kidnaps the kids. He, like, generally is, like, just a nuisance throughout the entire game. Um, I feel like he's just a mini boss for the whole... He is. He game. is, because, like, you encounter <laughs> him. So the first time you fight him is um, when you're in Kakariko Village, and it's, like, um, wild, wild west status where you're like standing in the road and then he like comes galloping around the corner and the little kids are standing in the road and they're just like no and then the tiny adorable little kid like oh, knocks kid, yeah. the girl out mm-hmm. of the way Seriously. um yeah and then they take the, the little kid though oh, so cute um but yeah so he storms through and you have to chase him first um he's on boar back Giant boar, yeah. and you're on epona and you have to like chase him through the field and um He's got, like, all his buddies are chasing mm-hmm. after you, too. So you have to fight them while you're chasing him. And he's got the kid, like, on a stake yeah, for, the whole like, time. Like, a flag almost. Yeah, like, like literally like, parading around the field. He is alive. <laughs> yeah. 
And you have to fight him on the Elden Bridge at the end where it's like a joust, remember? Yes. Oh, you, and you joust him a couple times, actually. You do. Throughout the game, but this I is the first time. literally wrote all caps. I am bad at this. <laughs> I do remember you being bad at this. <laughs> well, I'm bad at the first part where like you have all the other enemies coming at mm-hmm. you. And then I'm really, really, mm-hmm. really bad at the jousting. Um, and I said, I think this is the worst King Bulban fight. I actually think that as, for me at least, as the game progresses, mm-hmm. the King Bulban fights get easier yes agreed because the second time you face him is so this is like um when you're protecting the carriage that has talma and zelda mm-hmm. or not zelda um Ilya. not Ilya, zelda, yeah, not you, zelda. Bar- you barely talk to zelda and twilight princess uh has talma and Ilya in it um and it's on the great hylia bridge and this is the second time you're not really jousting. He's running at you, but you're not an opponent in this one. I think you are, yeah. Are you? Yes. Because you shoot him with a bow and arrow in this one. Yes. Because um, you had it. You didn't have it the first time. Correct. And, like, I think if you hit him once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My notes here say, here you attack with the bow and arrow. Still hard. I am still bad at this. You have to dodge <laughs> his attack, then shoot him with the bow. Two things I am very bad at. So, like, when you're moving, I'm good at shooting the bow when you're standing still, but anytime <laughs> you have to be, like, on horseback or moving and mm-hmm. shooting at a target at the same time, um, that is not my forte mm-hmm. in a Zelda game <laughs> at all. Uh, and then... But that's not the last of King Bulban that we've seen. Oh, that's bad, because he's coming up. Uh, I know. So we see him two more times. So the next time is on the Arbiter Grounds, which is this one I remember the best, okay. um, having not played Twilight Princess in quite a while. Um, so this duel is on foot. In <laughs> my notes, I say, finally. Uh, oh, yeah, I do remember this one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's like when you're um, trying to find the entrance, I think, to the Arbiter's yes. Ground. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you take one of his one of the boars at this point and you're like knocking towers over and stuff doors at in, this yeah. part and knocking doors in um but yeah he's got a big giant axe and you face him on foot and then the very last time you face king bulbin is um when you get the key to the castle in the courtyard of hyrule castle at the very end and yes. again this is on foot um so it's like you're walking around and then like the big like twilight looking barriers rise up all yeah. around you mm-hmm. and like trap you you're basically in a cage match with king Bulbin. um <laughs> is how the last one works so yeah i like him but i don't i like that story-wise i like him because it kind of gives you like it's like a secondary antagonist for the game Mm -hmm. so it's like it's like a grudge match every time he comes back up Mm -hmm. i feel like it gives link like an extra little like push to be like oh this guy again um (laughs) like you said i think when we were talking about it just now um but yeah ultimately most of the fights i actually really genuinely do not enjoy gameplay minds yeah and i do actually remember one thing about him the final time you fight him he just kind of gives you the like. He just like stops. And yeah, gives he's you the like, key. just take it. And he's like, I, I, I play on the winning side, and clearly this is not the winning oh, side. Oh yeah, and I then just kind of, and he kind of walks off into the sunset mm-hmm. and doesn't care for anything. So I'm like, cool. well, and then Midna's like, huh, I didn't know he could talk. Yeah, remember? oh yes, yes, he does do that. <laughs> she throws some shade. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I remember that now. But yes, so King Bulbin from Twilight Princess. All right, my next one. Make sure I'm not missing anything here. Um is from Breath of the Wild. And you may think, are there many bosses? Um, and in my research, I, and that's why I said they're not always in a dungeon, kind of like Skulkin. Well, and King Bulbin. And King Bulbin as well, yep. In a dungeon. Um, so I am going to stretch this one a little bit. You guys can make fun of me for trying this one, but I'm going to I'm going to use it. High Nox. Yeah. So... I hate fighting them. It's usually you find them, yes, in the middle <laughs> of a field. They're sleeping and everything else, but they are used as a mini boss sometimes in mi- like kind of like those mini quests and um, monster gauntlet type things as well. Well, because like isn't isn't it a high nox that you have to fight on that one island where you lose all your stuff? Yes. Okay. That's one of those monster gauntlets, and then yeah. even in the trial of sword, if you've comp- um, if you tried it or anything, um, they're never the last one, but like they're like a, a step below the last one, or like that middle ground, because I think you do like eight, and then like number four is a high nox of some sort. So it's like a middle ground, yeah, and then you, you get, the and then you get, yeah. yes, and then you get like a free zone where you can. Like knock down trees and get food and get some more weapons and stuff like that. And then you continue on. So it's kind of like a mini boss in those. And that's I'll what I'm trying to go with. That. I'll give you that. Um, 
And I actually found out, I didn't realize this, they're actually in other games. So they're in A Link to the Past, which okay. I, I, I did play Link to the Past, but I don't recall them really. Well, I haven't played but that it's one, been so. it's been many moons since I've <laughs> since I've um played that one. And then I have not played Link's Awakening, but they are in that as well. Um, as mini bosses. So like they they are in other games as just regular characters, but like there are actually mini bosses in those two games. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's some precedence that they're mm-hmm. a mini boss. Yep. And then of course there's the four versions. You got the red and blue, which are standard and pretty easy. The Stall Nox, as we talked about yeah, as the well. Skull one. And then you have the black one, which is apparently the hardest. I don't think I found him yet. No. If I did, I I mean I just went at him with or maybe uh, just ran, weapons. Or just maybe just ran, ran past him. There are some times when I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not in the mood to deal with you, so I just keep running. Well, that's, uh, I just, I'm full on weapons, and I know you probably have some good weapons, but I already have I good weapons. Full. I just started a new breath game, and like in the very beginning, I was like trying to go a different path and like walk around and do different stuff from what I did last time. And <laughs> like literally, we're talking beginning, I have no armor, I am armed with sticks. <laughs> I woke up a stone talus and I was like, <laughs> um. <laughs> and they are actually listed Run away. as bosses as well in Breath of the Wild. They're considered I can see that. Well, because it's not two. just like a normal enemy that like, it's not just like a Moblin or like a Choo Choo or something, right? Like it's or even big, a Lionel. Yeah, a Lionel takes, wouldn't be one either. A Lionel wouldn't be? They're more common to find out there. I guess, but I would maybe consider a Lionel a mini boss because it's like, it takes like, strategy and concentrated effort to defeat. See, you know what I'm saying? The reason I probably say no is because going back to the trial of the sword, the very, 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 very last one, and I talked about this in one of the other videos I did for Lonely Goron, but I thought I reached in and I did get to the end and right there is a black Lionel in the final level. So like I consider him more of a He's boss. He's more of a boss. Okay. And same thing with the Guardians as well. I consider them more boss. Well, yeah. yeah. The Guardians. Ugh. <laughs> we do well you you fought a couple in that first, yeah but they're like first one, they're but, not moving yeah, they're stuck they're not in the trying ground to get you, yeah. you can run away pretty they easily, look like yeah. they're deactivated but then you get close mm-hmm, enough and they're activated mm-hmm. again so yeah i'm still in like the very i'm still on top of the i haven't gotten the sale thing the sale thing yeah you're yeah. almost there you, you got the three temple or uh, three mm-hmm, shrines three and you're shrines. trying to, to go to him now and get that yep yep so yeah Hinox, I think it's a good one. Um, I mean, they're not super difficult either compared to even like a Lionel or a Guardian, even a Talus. I think those three are, are harder than Hinox. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't. I don't like fighting the Hinox. I don't like fighting any of those big things. <laughs> honestly. Wait until you get further in the game. Well, I've played deeper in the game. Yeah. But, yeah. It's been a minute. Yeah. All right. So your next one. Yeah. How many do you have left? I have one, two, three, four left. Okay. I, I only think, have two left. I think your two are going to be on this. My, on my okay. List. So you go next. Okay. With one that you don't think will be on my list. Okay. I'm going to go back to Ocarina. Of course. Okay. Um, the Poe Sisters. I almost put those on my list. I, I, I almost the put them on there. A nice little like drawn out mini boss mm-hmm. set throughout the whole temple. So, um, for those who know, Forest Temple and Ocarina of Time. Um, and there's four of them all together. I think I have their names. Yep. Joelle, Beth, Amy, and Meg. Are Straight up did not know they had names. <laughs> <laughs> also, those names are like, isn't that the Babysitter's Club? I mean, it's not, but like, those are it such normal names, names yeah. right? <laughs> um, so when you first walk into the main room, they're in there and then... They take the flames from the, the mm-hmm. little pots are at, and they go off in their own directions. And you got to fight, fight them to get the flames back, so you can get to where the boss is. Yeah. So you face Joel and Beth first, and they're the ones where they're in the inside of the pitchers, but you can't really get them until you get the bow. And like you yeah, go you through one set of stairs, picture with the yeah, bow, right? So you go through yeah, one yeah, set of yeah. stairs, you go to a middle room, you fight a uh, Stoffos, which is pretty easy and then you get the bow you go back and you take care of the first one and then you go to the other end and take care of the second one very simple you shoot the pit the three pitchers they can hide in and then you fight them they disappear and then they come back you shoot them they disappear and wash repeat mm-hmm. um next is amy um and that's the block puzzle Can't one so names. oh i did and, hate that one that and, was stressful and you drop some puzzle pieces <laughs> down and if you're not fast enough it'll pick them up uh-huh. just rotate you them and drop them again. you gotta start over uh, and the last one is meg in which 
you go back in the main room and she's crying because her sister's have been defeated and she's sad super sad she sees you and she decides to attack you she makes multiple versions of herself oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to find out which one is the real version which hint is the one that spins and then yeah. you shoot that one um and then once you defeat her she lights the last one and then you can go down below the temple and go into the actual boss right of that one i think it's a fun one i think it's very different compared to most most mini bosses or bosses in general. Yeah, it's like multi-layered. It's, yeah, you got yeah. puzzles. And not even just like, this isn't my final form, right? It's not yeah. even just like the same boss. It's yeah. completely different. Yeah, I don't go Dragon Ball Z with it where you find next form, <laughs> next form, next form. I know. Well, that's it's, how most of them are. The, well, yeah. the main bosses. I feel Twin like Rover does mini, <laughs> mini bosses are usually more, yeah. you know, one and done. Mm-hmm. So, But yeah, I think I think it's a fun one. And of course, I love Ocarina of Time, so I love most mini bosses there. Yeah, I, I like I said, I almost did that one and I didn't pick it because of the puzzle one. <laughs> yes. Because that one is so stressful. <laughs> I am not, I, as Baymax says, I am not fast. I am I'm a slow, methodical video game player. Yeah. <laughs> so stuff that is timed, uh, I'm with Kate <laughs> on timed stuff. I cannot stand it it just like ratchets my anxiety up like 10 notches even if even if the timer is like irrelevant and i ultimately like the, i'm thinking those little islands on wind waker mm. where like you're getting what is it, the ice arrows and the fire arrows yes. and like you have plenty of time like you have plenty of time it gives you like i don't know anxiety. three minutes or something yeah. to do a very basic task <laughs> but it just stresses me out and then i'm more likely to screw up and especially when you're i think it's the fire arrow when you're in the ice yes and like yeah. you slip you it's slip so funny fall though on your face you go ah, and he yep. yells yeah that but if is you really try funny. if you're running real fast and then immediately try and turn the other way you literally fall flat on your face and it's hilarious i do that on purpose, you do it on purpose all the time, yes. i play that level oh poor tune link yep yep so your next one all right my next one twilight princess i think i know this one this is would win well my last two i, I worked out kind of conveniently because i didn't really list them in order from like least favorite to favorite but the last two are probably my two favorites to actually fight on this list Mm -hmm. um so twilight princess death sword yes Mm -hmm. love the death sword it's on my list well let's say as soon as we were gonna do this topic we both looked at each other and we're like well i know one that's gonna be on both (laughs) (laughs) it's gonna be death sword so cool so cool so um in my notes all caps, the coolest mini boss of all time. Actually, not in all caps, but I did put by far the coolest slash <laughs> darkest mini boss. And even put down that it should be the actual boss. Come at me, bro. Yeah. Like it should well, be, no, but so think cool. about the actual boss from that temple. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about Death Sword first, but it, it's in the Arbiter's Grounds. Mm-hmm. And when oh, you defeat it, yes. you get the spinner. So that's the one with the dragon. Yes, that's I think the that's skull that dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have just had his own That temple. whole temple is just cool yes i like the arbiter's grounds a whole lot in that game so um if you don't remember so it's in the arbiter's grounds which is out in the desert um it's where all like the ghosty skull things are and like the little skeletons that like latch Mm -hmm. on you and stuff Ooh, and the the shadow mice that you can't see right and And you're like walking and you have to turn yeah so it's a cool it's a cool this is probably my favorite dungeon in twilight princess now that I'm thinking about it, it might be my favorite dungeon in all of Zelda. It's probably up there. It's top up there. Three. I'd probably say top three for me. Yeah, it might be my favorite. Um, but anyway, so you enter this room, and all that's in the room is this big, huge sword stuck in the ground, and it's, like, tied up with, like, chains and ropes and stuff. Ropes with, like, it looks like uh, pr- like pieces of paper with a head, like... Uh, prayers on him that's kind of like maybe keeping the spirit at bay keeping it locked yeah. so of course what is linked to when he walks in the room <laughs> he, he does just suffers one of the things where you have to to continue in the game for those just... who couldn't hear it I, I did it I you could hear the eye roll I had there. <laughs> of course link does this it's so it's so link um but you yeah you just slash through one of the ropes um and then the rest of the ropes catch fire and then the sword to you as human Link just appears to like rise up in the air and start floating around the room all by itself of its own accord. And if you just stay as human Link, um, you're just like screwed. There's nothing you can do about it. It will strike at you and you don't see the enemy. You just see it's a big giant sword. So you have to transform into a wolf um, and then use your wolf senses. And that's when you can see that the sword is actually being wielded by like this giant phantom ghostly 
a reaper type character. Like, he's got like a dragon head. He's got horns coming out. So like, cool. Yeah. Like, like a super devilish like yeah. creature. Yeah. Super cool. So you have to defeat it both in wolf form and human form, yes. kind of. So in wolf form, you have to attack it and bite it until it becomes visible. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you switch back to your human form and um, you can attack him with the bow. You can attack him with the sword. You can just attack him like normal um, once he's visible. Um, so I like the mini bass boss here because he's awesome. He's just super cool. Yeah. Like if he said visually, like the design of the character is everything that I like best about Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. Honestly, it's dark. It's cool. It's a little more adult ish. You know what I mean? It's yeah, super detailed. It's it's like the epitome of the, what makes the art style of Twilight Princess cool to me. Um, and then the battle is really fun. I mean, it's it's a fun battle. It's not, it's not easy, but it's not frustratingly difficult no, either. No, it's not. It's, no. it's a good balance, in my opinion, at least. And I like that it makes you use the wolf mechanic. You use the I mean, it's just you makes you do a bunch of cool stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's no downside. I love I love the Death Sword. Yeah, and to add to that, because uh, like I said uh, on my list as well, um, two side notes actually I had with this. French version as well also translates to Foucher, which means Reaper as well. Oh, so well, there you go. Ma- makes you wonder if Gomes and the Death Sword were maybe maybe the same creature at one point in time. The timelines maybe changed a lot because they are not two s- separate... Oh, no, no, because... Gomes is in um, Majora's, and then this is Twilight Princess. So it is the same timeline. So it could be similar. Yeah, like a same mm-hmm. type of creature, at least. And then I looked up, I did a slight deep dive. Um, so the history of the sword, um, there's a lot, there's not detail, like, like concrete details in there, but the theory is that um, it was possibly an executioner sword um, for prisoners since it is the Arbiter Grounds. Yeah. Um, in which that's where they did a lot of that stuff, unfortunately. Sorry, kids. Um, be a little dark there. Um, the whole game is a little dark. I mean, yes. Let's be clear. Um, so the it's it could be very similar to V with the Master Sword being the spirit within the sword. The spirit is it was shunned within that sword and then was obviously like kept down with the, the papers and the, and the ropes and everything to keep it from being released into the world. So it makes you wonder, like, is that like a dark version of Fee and the Master Sword? So I was, I was just like something I put together with that. That's interesting because that kind of parallels like, um, well, maybe I shouldn't. Well, no, because that's a main boss. And yeah. like in Skyward Sword, um, what's his face? Giram. Giram, yeah. Is Ganon's sword. Well, demise, yeah. Demise is a sword. Sorry, yeah. I always forget that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of sentient swords is mm-hmm. like a whole that, and that's the first one. Not not in timeline, obviously. Skyward Chronolog- is very release, much, yeah. but in release order, that's mm-hmm. I think the first. Is that the first sentient weapon? I think so. Technically, as far as I'm aware, it's the first I mean, one I could think of, yeah. at least. Yeah, not sure about that. I think, but from what I, from what I played, I believe so. Yes, but yeah, I think. Like you said, one of the coolest mini bosses, this detailed and the look and everything was just so cool about Very it. Very cool, yeah. I wouldn't give him this this temple, but I would like for him to have his own temple, be the main boss, make him tougher and everything else, but like he deserves it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And then you get the spinner, obviously, from defeating him. Mm-hmm. If we didn't say that already. Yes. Yeah. I believe we said that, yeah. And then you then use that to fight the main boss. Yeah. It's also very cool. Which the spinner is cool. I like that you can use it for travel. But it's, yeah, it's kind of like the gust bellows where it's like a random yeah, you don't use weapon that, that really doesn't outside. have a yeah. ton of use. I don't know. You, there are some things they use out in the main world. Like you see those little mm-hmm. marks where you can use it on. Or in the ground where you can spin gears and like yeah. open stuff. But, but really, it's only really good for the dungeon it's in. Yeah, but it's so cool it for is, that final. Yeah. I know we're not talking about final bosses, but it's so cool oh, yeah, for yeah, that yeah. final boss battle. Yeah. Um, I did take a peek at what your last one is, so I'm going to not do that one because it is on my list. <laughs> okay. Um, but I'm going to go back to Ocarina of Time. This See, is, this, this is, is why probably... I only picked one from Ocarina because I knew he'd have like <laughs> yep. nine. I only have four. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, I think I had four for Twilight and four for Ocarina. So, um, But my favorite mini boss 
and surprise it has you didn't say this one either again so i cool. saved it for so, you uh dark link yeah <laughs> dark link is i mean i know dark link was in the game prior to this game um in the original two if i remember correctly um and it has made other appearances but this is like the only time you really fight as a mini boss i I got to look to my that I've quick. played at least. Yeah. yeah. So he's the mini boss in the water temple. Um, it's such a cool fighting area with like you walk in, cool. you got the tree in the middle of the it's water. Like a, it looks like an open. You know what? Area. It's like a trippy dream sequence yeah. a la like Luke on Dagobah, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. you have to face the enemy within before you can yep. face the true enemy. <laughs> so, one thing actually I didn't know when I first was doing this um, when you're walking through the water, and you get to the end, you see it's locked and everything, and you come and you pass the island that it's at. Mm-hmm. Before you pass the island, you can see like a, a shadow or a reflection of you. Yeah. But as soon as you pass the island, it's no it's longer gone. there. I've heard that. I, have no, yeah. I still have yet I to like it, actually, notice that because I played the last time I played Ocarina was before I heard someone say that. Mm-hmm. I think it was someone on this show that said that. I think so, possibly. <laughs> um, so it's, I mean, it's fun. You can do hack and slash. It's yes. it's, it's difficult. Um, I think I got lucky use, last time. Um, I think you have the megaton hammer you can use as well. It makes mm-hmm. it a little harder for him to jump that. on your sword. Or Din's fire. Din's fire was always my go-to when facing him yeah. because he can't do anything for it. I love Din's fire in general. Yeah. Um, and just fun facts like um, he other appearances that he's in. Um, he's in Twilight Princess. Yes. The more cutscene. Incredibly creepy dream sequence. Yes. Um, so creepy. I had down that he this is his second appearance altogether, so I believe he's an adventure of Link. You are asking the wrong person. Um, yeah, Adventures of Link. Yep, I'll have, we're down right here. I just gotta get a little further. Thanks, Pastor um, Ryan. I know. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, Adventures of Link, Oracle of Ages. He's in Spirit Tracks and Triforce Heroes as well. Okay. Um, I see. Uh, and the other fun things that I pointed, I uh, like to point out. Breath of the Wild, you can look like him, actually. Yeah. You get the outfit and make yourself look like him, and you mm-hmm. get more powerful at night, I believe. You did that, didn't yeah, you, I last did. time I finally, when you played finally through did Breath? It. Yeah. I never knew about it until like I was doing my research and this. I'm like, I can do that? And then like I was playing already and just like found out how to do it and did it, and I got the whole outfit. I'm like, oh, yeah. so cool. Um, and the other fun thing that I think you actually pointed this out to me was... This is very like you. You fighting Dark Link in this in this uh, battle is Luke fighting Vader in the tree. Yeah, I just said that. Where it's Luke yeah. on Dagobah. Yeah. yeah. So, or if we have any Dragon Prince fans in the house, yeah, like with uh, Callum's dream sequence in season two. Yep. Yeah. And he sees his dark self version. He's he mm-hmm. doesn't really fight him, but like verbally. No, but you have to confront him. them. Yeah. I think it's a an interesting trope mm-hmm. that you see. I won't say frequently, but you do see it in mostly fantasy mostly fantasy, stuff, yes. Um, where you do, like I said, you have to fight, you have to confront yourself and the darkness that's in you before you fight the main baddie. Yep. And I think that that's, maybe we're digging too deep into this, but it is, it's like, you know, if, if maybe this is like, if Link would be drawn toward power or toward Mm -hmm. yeah taking control for himself instead of just stealing ganon away Mm -hmm. um that's why he has to fight dark link first yeah so i mean i mean courage is very similar to being thinking you can do whatever you can and that leads to kind of a power complex because you just have the courage and you just think you can take on whatever you want and that could be that version of Link that just becomes dark and obsessed mm-hmm. with the power and thinking he can mm-hmm. take on anyone. So, yeah, it's very deep and mytho. Like, Dark Link is such a cool villain. Yeah. Um, I wish he was in more games. Um, Agreed. Well, the design is so cool. The red eyes, the it's darkness. Like, it's like every time... A slight detour, but anytime we play Smash, I always yes. <laughs> will change the character of whatever I'm playing to like whatever the like dark version yeah. is. And then dark so they look... Link, you actually turn him into Dark Link. Yeah, so, you do. Like red you eye do. and everything. And I actually, I don't know if you can see behind me, I actually have the Dark Link yeah. sword. Mm-hmm. Um, I got as a Halloween costume years and years ago. So that is actual Dark Link and not the regular Master Sword. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, and of course, with this, once you beat him, you get the hook shot and you move on and continue on with the forest temple. Nice. There. Not the forest temple, water temple. Water temple. Sorry, I apologize. Yeah, water temple. Um, and last one. I'll let you take this one. 
my last one. So this is the only one that I have from Skyward Sword, mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, Skyward Sword. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's some good things about that game. And one of the good things is like the area where this bad guy is. So this mini boss, I had to look up the name because I did not know it. It is LD002G Skurbo. Uh, <laughs> it's the pirate robot captain thing. Um, I just always call him the cool robot <laughs> pirate captain guy. Yes. <laughs> That's like literally all I call him. Um, so he fights with like an electric drill sword where, he, you know, he holds it up and goes, it spins around and it's all intimidating. Mm -hmm. Um, and how you do it, you fight him for three rounds. So it's basically like you're making him walk the plank. Um, and so behind you is like a wall of, or like an X of spikes, like yep. barbed wire, basically trapping you on the bridge with him. And you have to like, batter him forward and you're trying to force him off the edge of the bridge. So you have to force him off the edge three times before you actually win because the first two times he'll like jump back up and force you back and then you have to mm -hmm. batter him back tougher. again. Yeah, and it gets a little more difficult every single time. Um, so I like this mini boss. He's very different. Um, you don't see, I mean in Skyward there's like that that's it, okay. You see quite a few robots in Skyward Sword. Yeah. I can't think of any other Zelda game where you really see a ton. Like, I mean, you have the uh, Beemos mm -hmm. and I guess that, I can't think of any other like robots that you encounter. Throughout the games. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know of any real other ones either. I think most of them are kind of like mobile and goblins things and like maybe some child version of those or just people too like uh, mm -hmm. in, in uh, link to the past they're they're regular people for the most part and then you do face like creatures as well in that one but like when you're first in the hyrule castle like it's the guards like there's regular guards that attack you there yeah so yeah i don't think there's any other like machines that attack you as far right. as i'm aware so yeah so that's pretty cool i think it's a different type thing and like that whole area of skyward for me where, because that's with the sand ship stuff, yeah, right? Ship. And that to me is like the main redeeming factor of Skyward Sword for me. That, and then where you're fighting the big whale inside the cloud. Okay. Those are like the two parts of Skyward Sword that I'm like, okay, this is legitimately cool. Like, I actually enjoy this part of the game a lot of the rest of the game. Um, I, I, I've played it a few times. So I don't I don't love the most of it. Um, but yeah, so I like the mini boss too because you can win by hack and slashing. <laughs> you, I mean, you gotta be a little more precise. Yeah, yes. or you just swing the Wiimote with wild abandon. <laughs> well, going with, cause, and this is the reason a lot of people don't like Skyward is that it's the fancier Wiimote where mm -hmm. you have to actually slash the right way in order to actually do it. So like yep. he'll hold his axe or his hand up to block. And if you hit it, he'll then attack you. And no, you and then you, the spike, he you have pushes to go you back. Yep. yep. So, uh, I mean, yeah, he's, he's such a cool guy. There is another version of him. I, when I was doing my research, I forgot that he had a different name, but it's a, another like mechanical captain that you face later in the game. It's mm -hmm. not even in, uh, in the sand ship. It's just somewhere else. Yeah. And he had a slightly different name. He's pretty much exactly the same, but yeah. Um, yeah, no, he's on my list as well. Um, which is why I wanted you to say it. Um, but I did do some fun things with this. First of all, very dark nut, dark knuckle like where you kind of have to test your backflips a little bit. Yeah, true. You true. You got to dodge and you can't block because it's an electric drill yep. sword thing. Mm -hmm. It'll you. Yep. Um, and the other thing I did find out the combination. So his name is Scurvo. As you said, um, which is a name combination of scurvy, yeah, and servo. So scurvy we know is a disease while at sea when you don't have any fresh fruit, which Correct. obviously he hasn't had anywhere in that desert. He's um, a robot. I don't and think he means citrus. I mean, probably, not. but <laughs> servo is short for servo mechanism, which is a part used in machines. Interesting. So that's why he got the name Scurvo. I figured it was something together. to do with scurvy when yes. I said Scurvo, but mm -hmm. I didn't know the Scurvo. Um, and another fun fact is he is the only other machine from long ago mm -hmm. that's still that's alive. still alive besides Scrapper. Yep. That is, has to be fixed to even work. And pass. I mean, you could say Fee because like, it's an old sword and probably can be back there that long too. Yeah. But Scrapper is definitely the only Well, yeah, because all the other ones, you have to hit those time stone yep. things to bring to them to life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because even the Beemos in that game, 
Yep, the BMOs are, are all broken down. Dead until you. I guess I just realized you have the flying ones too that shoot down or shoot rockets at you as well. I think that they're dead until you turn it off. No, yeah, they are. But okay, like, they're yeah. another machine that mm-hmm. can attack you. So. But yeah, they're they are also if you are outside the realm of the time stone thing, then they can't attack you because they fall to pieces. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I always take, took my advantage. Like, I would slowly, like, kind of trick them to fall out, and then, and then they fall out and just... Yeah. I'm like, ah, I don't long have to fight Why? <laughs> Same thing with the... Cause you have, well, because you fight them with the tennis method, too. The flying ones. You bat the you rockets back methods. at them. Yeah. And, oh, my gosh, I'm bad at that. I'm really <laughs> bad at that. But uh, And then the other one, too, is with the, the goblins that are from the past as well. And they have, like, electric swords. Ugh, I, I would always those. do the same thing. Just have yeah. them come out to me. I'm like, am I then, outside the time nope, zone? He's like, you're oh, you're gone. Just bones. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so dark. Thing. Because so they get annoying. Because, again, the same thing with Skyward. No, I know. I hate make sure fighting right. those. I hate fighting those. But I will Generally speaking, electric energy enemies like even choo choos oh, i'm so bad mm-hmm. anyways go ahead i Sorry. will say you were talking about skyward how you don't like it i there are redeeming factors no skyward. for sure it's not that i don't like it i think the art style is very cool i think the music is overall okay the worst of all the zelda games personally really? and that's i <laughs> shots fired i know the there's some decent <laughs> Like the Farron Woods theme is pretty cool. Fee's I like Fee's song. Fee's song is cool. Mm-hmm. Well, Other than that, one. though, like the Lanayru Desert is like, I well, could take it or leave it. But the thing on the volcano, but um bum 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 da dum. I want to claw my ears off when I'm playing. <laughs> I hate those levels. And honestly, like maybe I would even enjoy the like gameplay on those levels, but I can't because I just hate that music so much. But yeah, so to me, it's like, I know it's like a the first sell the game where they actually did like a live orchestra and like it's actually recorded music instead of digital so like there's some very cool things with the music in that but just personal pop possibly unpopular opinion i think it's my least favorite music yeah. of all the zelda games i've played yeah yeah well, i think that's our list anyways yeah i think we got through them very cool so that pretty much wraps up the episode um mallory if they want to find you on the socials yeah. How can they find you? So you can find me mostly. I am on Twitter. Um, I'm on there all the time. So you can find me at MJ underscore Kuhn, K-U-H-N. Um, and then also, um, for anyone that doesn't know, I have um, my first fantasy novel coming out next year from Saga Press. So if you want to follow for updates, I mean, I'll post it on Twitter too. But um, my website is just MJKuhn.com. So, and I also have a blog on there with like a ton of writing stuff um, and publishing information. So that is where you can find me. Right. What about you, Ryan? Um, I'm on Twitter. I not as often as most um, are, but uh, my handle is Rambo Coon. So R A M B O K U H N. And I also have a blog that is about um, home brewing beer and beer in general. And you can find that at hopbrewandblog.com. All one word. Nice. Um, and then if you want to follow the show um, on Twitter, it's at another Zelda pod. Um, they're also on Instagram. We're at, um, at another Zelda podcast. And then the website, which also honestly has the links to all of the socials and everything, yes. the discord channel, um, the blog, that's another Zelda podcast.com. Yep. And of course, iTunes, you can go on there and find everything. Uh, make sure you do good reviews. Um, Please rate the show well so we can come back on. We'd love yeah. to come back on and do this again. <laughs> kind of give motive for David to be like, oh, they did a good yeah, job. Bring we'll, them we'll back. Bring back. Yeah. <laughs> we want David to bring us back. So that's all from us. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. We had fun. It's, it's it, like I said earlier, it's fun as being a fan of the, of the show last year. And now, like, we're, we're here recording an episode. So, so cool. It's yeah. the coolest thing. And one of my, one of my favorite parts of, the show was the end and i know david always wants the guests to do this but we're both guests so <laughs> in the wise wise words of of kate may okay, okay bye, bye. <laughs>